Hi, this is Dr. Bill White again. I'm a general dentist that's done nothing but orthodontics for the last 45 years, and I'm a member of the American Orthodontic Society, board certified in that. And uh, if you want to learn orthodontics, this is an excellent place to go. And uh, we have some excellent teachers, and you have board certification, and if you work up and learn enough orthodontics to pass the boards of the American Orthodontic Society, you will certainly know how to do orthodontics. So anyway, I'll drop that. I'm going to talk about uh, causing TMJ problems uh, through orthodontics. You know, orthodontics can cause it. Regular dentistry can cause it. All kind of things can cause TMJ uh, problems, just pushing your jaw backwards anyway can cause it on somebody that's got a weak joint. Uh, anyway, this young lady that I'm going to show you right here was a class 3. I had a class 3 crossbite, and we corrected that and brought the uh, upper anterior from the back, back behind the lower anterior, put them up in front of the in, the lower anterior and the bite closed down a little bit and her jaw started giving her trouble so we had we knew what it was the upper teeth were trapping the mandible back the mandible wanted to be further forward to give you some more room back in this retro discal area so let's get in here and show you exactly what happened and you can recognize this if it happens uh, to you sometime because it doggone sure can and uh, orthodontics does have an effect on the temporal mandibular joint so don't let anybody tell you that it doesn't it doggone sure does and it can cause a lot of problems Coke, so can general dentistry so can crowns and anything that pushes your jaw backwards can create that all right here's this young lady She's uh, got a pretty normal looking face. You don't recognize the jaw sticking out that, that much. When you look at it here, you pick up just a little bit of forward positioning of the chin, but not, not all that much. But when you look at her smile, you can kind of see it there for sure. But when you look at her teeth, you can really see it. I'll tell you something else. That I've learned over the years doing this. I've hunted for somebody that had a forward slide like this. I doubt if she, her jaw closes this far forward normally, but when she gets close to touching the teeth up there, she shifts that jaw forward. And I have never found anybody with a forward slide like that that had a TMJ problem. And I want to stand on that. Uh, it's uh, it's something about bringing your jaw out like this. I'm sure there are plenty of people in the world that have arthritis and other damage to the joints and all that that have problems with it. But I never found anybody. But here's somebody that has this forward slide and she does not have any TMJ problem. And it's real simple to treat this case. I put a little pad behind these lower anterior teeth and bonded it on those teeth. Raise this bite open. I'll show show you that whole thing here in the in the case. And this is something you need to know if you're a dentist, any kind of dentist. I don't give a darn if you're an orthodontist or what you are. If you're doing orthodontics, you really ought to understand this. And now, when I open the bite, where you can have this edge-to-edge -edge anterior teeth up here, that's probably where her jaw normally would go. But then to close, she has to bring it forward more to close her teeth together to chew. In other words, if, if I go back here, you see she had to come forward a few millimeters to get through that and she's got a where the cross bite changes over right there at that 
that section. Uh, now these teeth meet back here. These teeth meet pretty good, but then the cross back goes back on this side all the way back uh, to the bicuspid area. Okay, now you kind of remember where this jaw is. Now we're going to come in and we bond some acrylic on the lingual side of these teeth right in here. Pick this up where this chews or touches on that. It can't close down again. Now, uh, in other words, we put something here that those teeth hit and they stay like that. And then we put some pressure on this. Shoot, it just took us a few days or weeks or whatever to go across that. This is 31391 right there. Now it's closed down. All right, now we go to 31391. Just look at the other side of it. All right. Now this is the way the upper teeth look. That's when we started the case right here in 410, 410, 91. Now this one, we started it at that point right there. Now, whoops, let me go back here and erase that. All right. Now, started the case, 41091. And looking at it from the inside the mouth, just shooting a picture in there when she was closed like that. See, these are upper teeth. Let me go back there. And uh, the upper teeth are hitting inside the mouth there. Now, I think my marker has gone haywire here. Now, here it is, five, and I'm not marking at all, so I'm going to have to stop. Let me go back over here and uh, fix this marker. Okay. Now, we go back here, and you look in underneath there, and I'll show you what. We had a little bit of acrylic there to bite down on. In other words, these teeth couldn't come in front of the upper teeth. The upper teeth would hit on this, and so that had them in the open so we could push on the upper teeth, push them over, and just took a, a very short time to correct the bite. Now, correcting the bite was no problem. We got it over like that. Now, now the TMJ <laughs> deal came about. So what we had to do, we had to advance the maxilla. I mean, the maxilla had to come forward enough so that the lower jaw could close like it had been closing. So we had to advance that. So we uh, maybe did a little stripping of these teeth and close them up a little bit. And then we spread these out. And I made some, some spaces between the laterals and set the teeth up like that. And so you had to advance the maxilla enough so that the mandible could go back like it was comfortable. That was a problem. Now, a lot of people don't understand that. Uh, so anyway, you can run into a TMJ problem doing orthodontics. And that's what I want you to know. Now here we've advanced. And we got a little space, and we'll bring it out and bring it and line it up and do the regular orthodontics, which takes a while to do that. Now we put a midline elastic and pull it back over and line it up okay. So here we go, going through it. We got it settled down where it could be in a class one relationship and not have any TMJ problem. We had no space or else we stripped some of the lower anterior to reduce it so we could slide the jaw a little further forward without having to jump the bite, you see. All right, here's the young lady later on. And I'm gonna go through her x-rays. She had, if you have 
a case like this now and they've got wisdom teeth on the bottom and they don't have wisdom teeth on the top this can happen so we normally would send them in and have these teeth removed if we're trying to get this to go back a little the teeth to go back but not the jaw back here on the condyle to go back and we try to advance this a little bit so that the jaw is in that forward position where it's comfortable now that's getting involved in orthodontics further than a lot of people want to do but I don't see that I took these wisdom teeth out but surely somewhere down the line I did I wouldn't want to continue keeping them okay I don't think I show any pictures of it but we finished the case up there with a little space out now here is the cephalometrics when we started and uh, I've never found that she's probably got a about a two millimeter slide when she comes forward no problems at all no TMJ problems I've never run into anybody that does that to any problems I'm sure there are a lot of people that do but anyway when we brought these teeth over on this side now and they weren't out far enough and so she hit here it pushed the mandible back and she came down with a TMJ problem because you're crowding the retrodiscal tissue, the tissue back here in the back of the mouth whoops sorry all right here's we brought it over like that and then we had to work out some space in this upper and crowd this or strip it a little bit to reduce it so that the jaw could close in the same place that her jaw was comfortable in back here and that's stuff you need to learn all right I'm going to show her uh, I don't have to show you all these transcranial x-rays when we used to take transcranial x-rays on everybody that had TMJ problems that we did orthodontic work on and you could see you had them closed and you uh, had them relax and then open their mouth and you could kind of follow the condyle in there and you could see the various ways of that and that's probably getting more involved than we need to here this is the way that we started out the case and here's the way we finished it in 1991 I think we started in uh, another month or so before this and had the cross by jumped and we finished the case up and I think I show it here a little later on down the line that's 1993 93 93 93 it's just a good class one relation we spread the upper jaw a little bit there to have it meet better that's still 93 93 I took a lot of pictures on this uh, I used it in our lectures a lot okay this is 93 now here's where we finished it we put a bite plate and this is a bite plate in other words the lower anterior teeth fit into this groove right there and that keeps the thing from deepening anymore you see and we put a bond in three to three on the bottom uh oh that's the end of it and we never had any more TMJ with it and we corrected the problem so that finishes that uh, deal I appreciate you watching it and I hope you're uh, planning on doing orthodontics and if you need to study some more you can go to the